Hello and welcome to the guide. Are you looking for a build that can take on all content and has a great clear speed for a summoner and decent boss inability with very little investment? Then my Skelly Mage Necromancer is the build for you. In this guide we will cover the mechanics of the build, gear, gems and links, the specters used, and animate guardian gearing options, ascendancy choices, pantheon choices, passive tree, jewels and cluster jewels, followed up by gameplay at the end of the video. Path of building and timestamps will be down below. Let's get right into it. So let's get right into the mechanics of the build. So as you can see right here, we have level 21 summon skeletons. It's actually 25 with all of our other pluses. Now this is gonna be our main damage output. One of the big uniques that we're gonna need for this build is the Dead Reckoning Cobalt Jewel. Now with this jewel, as you can see down here, it says with at least 40 intelligence and radius, summon skeletons can summon up to 15 skeleton mages. So basically what you're doing is you're going to turn all of your summoned skeletons into summoned skeleton mages with this Dead Reckoning Jewel alone. This jewel makes it to where with the mages we're going to be dealing fire, cold, and lightning damage. Now we're only going to focus on the lightning and the fire damage. We're going to be bringing the, fire, the lightning damage up as much as possible with the wrath aura. And also we'll be running zealotry which will be bringing our spell damage up and our spell crit. Also on this build, we'll be running the Elemental Equilibrium Keystone Passive, which we'll get more into on the Passive Tree. But basically what it does is it's going to lower our enemy's Lightning and Fire Resistance by 50%. And we will be triggering that using Hydrosphere right here. And also connected to Hydrosphere is Hex Touch and Elemental Weakness. Elemental Weakness is going to lower the enemy's resist resistance even further by 39%. Another good thing about the build is that we're going to be running the Val version of the Summon Skeleton, so anytime we get to a boss, we just pop the Val version along with the skeletons we already have summoned. We're going to get like 35 to 40 more minions to help drop those bosses quickly. Another thing with this build that's great is that being a mage, Skelly Mage Necromancer, your mages have a lot of good clear speed and they have a lot of distance with their projectiles. I mean, they, they are cross-screening cross enemies. They're taking enemies out before you even get to them. I mean, you just kind of sit back, let your enemies, or I'm sorry, let your minions do the work and absorb the damage for you. Really clean playstyle. Now we'll go over the gear used for the build. We'll start off right here with the staff. We definitely want to go with Femurs of the Saints. It is the best in slot staff for the build. It's got a lot of bonuses for our minions and ourselves. You know, to start off, an 18% chance to block attack damage while wielding the staff. Kind of like having a shield also you know plus two to sock to level of socketed minion gems minions deal 75 percent increased damage one percent chance to block attack damage per summon skeleton which gives us a lot more block chance which is nice while mapping and bossing everything two percent increased attack and cast speed per summon raging spirit doesn't apply to us regenerate 0.6 percent of life per second for each raised zombie 30 percent increased mana regeneration per raised specter now, just so you know, on this build, we have a ton of life regeneration, almost like we're hitting a, a life pot constantly, so it's it's pretty nice. But we definitely want to go with Femurs of the Saints, and you want to make sure to get it six-linked. Next, we'll go into the Helm. This is pretty much a required unique for the build as well. We have the Devouring Diadem, Necromancer Circlet, awesome helmet. Now, this helmet is going to make it to where we're able to run Wrath, Zealotry, and Summon Skitterbots without having to worry about our mana. Along with a couple nodes of mana reservation on the tree, we can run all three of those. Now, as you can see right here, socketed gems have 20% reduced res reservation. Trigger level 15 Feast of Flesh every 5 seconds, which is a nice defensive bonus. 10% chance for energy shield to recharge to start when you use a skill. It gives us some re resistances. And then on the bottom, you can see Eldritch Battery. Now, what Eldritch Battery does, as you can see right here, spin energy shield before mana where skill mana costs. Energy shield protects mana instead of life. 50% less energy shield recharge rate. So basically what that's doing is we're going to be spending our energy shield instead of mana from here on out. You know, I have no mana, as you can see, 0 of 920. It's all reserved. Now, it doesn't matter because when you, I'm casting, as you can see right here, you see my energy shield down there on the right going down. You, you have no problems. You'll never have to worry about mana or casting, anything like that. So it's really nice quality of life for the build and it makes it to where we can fit in all three of our needed items next we'll go into the chest plate with the chest plate i just went with 
you know, a six link armor, obviously. You want to try to go for an armor energy shield base on this. Get as much life and resistance as you can. I tried to fit chaos res in on every piece of gear that I could, and I actually have max chaos res, which is really nice, and it's a great quality of life. So if you can obtain that through your gear, you definitely want to. Next, we'll go into the rings. You're going to need one unset ring because this build is starred for gem sockets. Now, for the rings, you want to try to get strength and dexterity as much as you can anyways. Get as much res and as much life as possible. You know, same on this ring over here. I have res, life, strength, dexterity. That's pretty much all that you're going for when it comes on the rings. For the belt, we're going to go for the same thing. Try to get as much res and life as you possibly can. You know, I got armor and energy shield also. You know, for the jewel inside of the belt, I got life. I got damage for the minions. Now, on your ghastly eye jewel, you want to try to get, you know, lightning damage because that's what we're scaling the most for our minions. Right there, I got minions have 7% increased attack and cast speed if you've used a minion skill recently, which we're constantly recently using minion skills by resummoning our skeletons. You know, and, and also a big one is minions have 5% chance to blind on hit with attacks that makes it to where like your zombies and the ones that are around you will hit enemies that come close to you and there's, they have a chance of blinding them which cuts their chance the enemy's chance in half of actually hitting you next on to the gloves with the gloves same thing life and resistances for the boots i tried to get as much life i got quite a bit on this on these boots right here i got good chaos res and cold res and then 30 percent increased movement speed I like to zoom around the maps as quickly as possible. When it comes to flask, I just have two quicksilver flasks that I'm moving around pretty quick. I've got a Rumi's Concoction Granite Flask, you know, for some block chance and armor gives us more damage reduction overall. And then I use two Seething, uh, seething Divine Life Flasks. One has uh, immunity to chill and freeze and one for my bleeding. Up here with the amulet. Now on the amulet, you want to try to find an amulet, if possible, with plus one to number of summoned skeletons. As you can see, plus one right there to maximum number of skeletons. Obviously, that's a damage boost. We want to try to get that on our amulet, if possible. You know, then just try to get as much life, strength, you know, whatever stats, other stats you can get. For our allocation, we're actually going to allocate Ravenous Horde, as you can see right up there. And when we get into the tree section of the build, I'll go over that with you. Now, back to the boots really quickly. We also have this option when it comes to boots, the Alberon's Warpath Soldier Boots. As you can see down there, it gives plus one to number of summoned skeletons. Gives you increased strength, armor, a little bit of chaos res, and only 20% increased movement speed. Now I opted out on these because I like the big, big chunk of life that I got from my boots, the, the resistances, helped me to cap my chaos resistance, and also the 30% increased movement speed. I like to get around the maps quickly. so. I didn't go with the Alberons, but that is definitely an option if you want to go with that. Now let's move on to our gems and links. So as you can see here in the staff, we have summoned skeletons. That's going to be our meat and potatoes of the build, our major damage output. Connected to that, we have pierce, minion damage support, lesser multiple projectiles for our clear speed, making to where each of our minions will fire two additional projectiles, spell echo. An elemental focus now these are the best gems in slot that we want for the build but up here or i'm sorry right here lesser multiple projectiles now this is basically for our clear when we come to bosses we want to switch this out with hypothermia support hypothermia support gives us a huge chunk of damage against chilled enemies which because of our summon skitter bots all enemies will be chilled so for bossing go ahead and switch lesser multiple out for hypothermia support into our helm. Now this is where all of our gems that are reserving mana are going to be. We want to start off by supporting those with generosity support, which increases the effect of all of our auras for the minions. We have wrath, zealotry, summon skitterbots. Into our body armor, we're going to have raised zombie, which we will have eight of them, raised specters, minion life, feeding frenzy. As you can see right here, feeding frenzy grants 10% more minion damage, movement speed, attack and cast speed. This is a huge DPS boost for our build. We definitely want to have this in there. Meat shield support, gonna make our minions more tanky so that they can endure more damage. And then our animate guardian will be down here at the bottom. Next, we're gonna come into the ring right here. I just put flame dash in the ring, obviously mobility skill so that we can get around the map easier. Next into our gloves. Now, 
we're going to have hydrosphere hex touch support and elemental weakness now we as you can remember we run elemental equilibrium on this build hydrosphere will trigger that and we will go into more detail on that inside of the passage tree hex touch support and elemental weakness now the hex touch support being supported by supporting the hydrosphere makes it to where when we cast the hydrosphere not only is it triggering our elemental equilibrium bringing all of the resistance of the enemies down their resistance comes down even more because this elemental weakness will be cast on them as well bringing their elemental resistances down another 39 percent right here i have summoned stone golem i just wanted to get this in i try to keep him up as often as possible he gives us a lot of life regeneration on top of the life regeneration we already have Next, we'll come into our boots. In our boots, I have a cast one damage taken set up. You want to leave this at level one. First in the chain, you're going to have desecrate. This will automatically go off when cast one damage ta taken is triggered. Desecrating and making corpses on the ground. And that will bring corpses up that will be triggering for flesh offering, which gives 24% increased movement speed and 25% increased cast and attack speed to our minions, a nice damage boost. And then convocation. So anytime this cast one damage taken support goes off from the amount of damage that we take, it's going to trigger all three of these gems right here. Convocation will bring our minions back to us, helping them, helping our clear and kind of being like a protective barrier around us anytime that we take a increased amount of damage. Now really quickly when it comes to the cast one damage taken support, we're going to leave this at level one so that it triggers when we take, as you can see down there, trigger supported spells when you take a total of 528 damage. Okay, so leaving that at level one, we do not want any of the gems after this to go above level 38, okay? On the top it says this gem can only support skill gems requiring level 38 or lower. If they go above that, then this will not trigger the gems. So over here you see I have Desecrate at seven, level seven. Flesh Offering I have at level eight. And Convocation I have at level five. This makes it to where all three of these in order will go off when we take that amount of damage, 528 damage. As for our specters, we want to go with two Carnage Chieftains and one Host Chieftain. You can see that they'll be the monkey guys that are running around right here. You will find the Carnage and the Host Chieftains in Act 7 at the Ashen Fields. They're going to go ahead and produce our Frenzy and Power Charges that will boost the amount of damage that our minions do substantially. When it comes to the anime guardian, our cheap gear setup will consist of the Leercast Festival Mask. We want to get some rare gloves that have a bunch of life and like 20 to 30 plus chaos resistance. The Dying Breath Iron Staff, which gives uh, damage to our minions. The Victario's Flight Goat Hide Boots, which will give more movement speed to not only us but our minions as well. And then Anbu's Charge Crusader Plate, which is just nice for the Anime Guardian. It provides defense, resistance, really good for the Anime Guardian on the cheap setup. So when it comes to the more expensive setup for the Anime Guardian, we want to go with the Crown of the Tyrant Magistrate Crown. Now, you want to read on the crown and make sure that you color the socket so that the minions gain the added lightning damage. Okay, It's very important before you... Equip that onto your anime guardian. Make sure that the color of the socket is the right color so that all of your minions will gain the lightning damage buff. When it comes to the weapon, we're going to go with the Kingmaker Despo Axe. Now this is going to give the fortified buff that you can see right down here, the little star that's around our minions and ourself, which makes it to where we take 20% less damage. Awesome. Uh, also, what the Kingmaker does is it gives us increased critical strike multiplier to all of our minions which is a nice damage buff and it will give all of our minions calling strike meaning anytime that we are fighting an enemy and our minions get them down to 10 percent life or lower they will automatically be dead and that even goes for cyrus for ascendancy choices so we're going to start here our first two points will come down into mindless aggression next our second two points will come over this way down into unnatural strength for the plus two to to all of the minion skill gems huge bonus Next off, we're going to come over here, and we're going to come down into Bone Barrier. Now, Bone Barrier will give us level 20 Bone Armor skill. As you can see right down here, I have it set to my left click, so it's constantly going off. Bone Armor is going to give us a defensive buff. It takes so much damage. Also, Bone Barrier gives 1% additional physical damage reduction per minion, up to 10%, which is nice. 2% increased recovery rate of life and energy shield per minion, up to 20%. 
and minions have 20% more maximum life, which is well needed on this build. And for our final points, we're going to come over here, down into Commander of Darkness. Now, Commander of Darkness, auras from your skills grant 3% increased attack and cast speed to you and allies. You and nearby allies deal 30% increased damage. You and nearby allies have plus 30% to elemental resistances. Just awesome for the build. For the Pantheon choices, this one's kind of up to you. As far as I go, though, I went with Soul of Lunaris for the Major God. Gives physical damage reduction and movement speed, making it to where we can map quicker. And down here, I took Soul of Grethkel for the Minor God, which also gives more physical damage reduction. So let's go ahead and get into the passive tree. Now, this will be for a level 94, this passive tree that I'm going to be showing you. My character is level 94. This is also in Path of Building, and the Path of Building link will be down in the description below. When it comes to the bandits in Act 2, you want to go ahead and kill all of them so you get the two points. As for your anointment on your amulet, you want to go up here with Ravenous Horde. Okay, Ravenous Horde is the best anointment that we can get for this build. It provides a huge amount of damage. It's going to be one Verdant Oil and two Opalescent Oils for that anointment. When it comes to leveling this build, what I would suggest and what I did is as soon as you can get you know, your summon skeletons, which is early on, go ahead and get summon skeletons and also get your raised zombies. I mean, that's going to be plenty to get you through all of the acts, all the way into mapping even. You know, and just get yourself a tabula rasa, put in the right um, damage gems, you'll be, you'll be set, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and start on the tree, come up this way. Now you can go first over here, grab yourself some life if you want. If if you do that first, then come over this way, grab Enduring Bond. After that, you want to come up this way, you can go ahead and grab this Jewel Socket, you can grab yourself some more life. Come up this way, we'll come up to Death Attunement. Now we definitely want to get Death Attunement early on, it gives us plus one to Spectres, Zombies, and Skeletons. After that, let's come over here, grab yourself some life right here with Purity of Flesh. Come over this way, grab yourself a Righteous Army. You can come down here and grab some more life. Next up, we could come down here, grab this Jewel Socket, and grab Elemental Equilibrium. Now, Elemental Equilibrium, like we had talked about earlier, basically what this does, when we cast our Hydrosphere that we have equipped, it's going to hit them with cold damage. And that cold damage is going to make it to where it lowers their resistance to ele or I'm sorry, lowers their resistance to lightning and fire damage. And that's the main damages that we'll be doing. So that's going to be a huge DPS boost. Okay, next off, come down this way. We can go ahead and grab this at some point, Whirling Barrier. It's going to give us some nice defenses while we're wielding a staff. We're not going to worry about the Cluster Jewels. We'll go over there those in just a minute. So we want to come this way. You can grab this Jewel Socket. Come up here, grab Grave Pact. Grab this Life around here. You know, we want to definitely come into this wheel over here and grab this Life. Uh, what did we miss? That's pretty. Oh, you definitely want to grab these nodes right here. Sovereignty. It's going to give us our minus reduced uh, reservation for our mana so that we're able to fit all of our auras in. Now, we also want to come down this way. At some point, we can go ahead and grab these life nodes right around here. We want to come down this way so we can get Heart of the Warrior, which is a nice boost to our life. And come all the way down here to Warrior's Blood. It'll give us strength and a Quite a bit of uh, life regeneration. Just remember that when it comes to the Cluster Jewel, you know, there's no set timing that you have to go into any points. Other than in the beginning, I would definitely get the ones that I showed in the initial start. But other than that, you can go ahead and get your Cluster Jewels going as soon as you as soon as you feel it's necessary. As for the actual jewels in the build, right here we have the Meat and Potatoes, the Dead Reckoning Cobalt Jewel. You know, this is very important, like we talked about in the beginning. This is what's going to be changing our actual skeletons into skeletal mages. And we want to place it right here so that we are actually getting the 40 intelligence that we need in the radius. Next up here, I have the Enthralling Prism Ghastly Eye Jewel. Now this one right here on the top, you can see it gives 36 to life. Minions deal 3 to 26 additional lightning damage. You basically want to get life and, and damage on any Ghastly Eyes that you can. <clears throat> also, you can see minions have 5% chance to blind on hit with attacks, and minions have 6% chance to hinder enemies on hit with spells. Now, you definitely want to get at least one jewel with, you know, minions have percent chance to hinder enemies on hit with spells. 
that's a big big deal right there because that's going to slow anything that's hit by your mages down by their movement speed down by 30 percent huge quality of life you know you definitely want all the enemies moving slower and over here we have another ghastly eye jewel on this one i just have dexterity that i was missing you know more life four percent increase in pale effect don't worry about that that's a dead stat but then on the bottom you can see means have eight percent chance to hinder enemies on hit with spells so that just brings their their chance to hinder up so basically you know the mages are hindering all the time on hit which is great slowing all of the enemies down for the cluster jewels to start off we want to go with a large cluster jewel now, as you can see on here, one of the added passive skills is Call to the Slaughter, and one of them is Renewal. We definitely want to get both of those on our large cluster jewel. Call to the Slaughter, minions deal 15% increased damage. Minions created recently have 10% increased attack and cast speed. Minions created recently have 30% increased movement speed. You know, that that's awesome because our skeletons are pretty much always created recently. We're constantly resummoning them. And then Renewal, minions regenerate 1% of life per second. Minions have 5% chance to deal double damage while they are in full life. You know, our skeletons are pretty much always on full life because we're always resummoning them. So we would definitely want Call to the Slaughter and Renewal for a large cluster jewel. Onto our mediums. You know, on my first medium right here, I have Feasting Fiends and Life from Death. Now, we want to get Feasting Fiends because Feasting Fiends is going to give us a little bit of leech for the minions. And you, we do want some uh, leech for the minions, definitely. So, it gives 10% increased maximum life, 10% increased damage, and minions leech 0.4% of damage as life. Now, we have Life from Death. Life from Death is one that we definitely need on the build. It gives minions have 15% increased maximum life. Minions regenerate 2% of life per second if a minion has died recently. And... You know, we're constantly resummoning our minions, which counts as a death, so they're always regenerating that 2% of life per second. And also, minions recover 4% of life on minion death. So, every time that we're recasting our mages, you know, that's giving 4% uh, of life recovery per minion on death, which is awesome. For our other cluster, medium cluster jewel right here, we have 4 passive and it's Blessed Rebirth. And renewal now we definitely want to get both of those blessed rebirth minions have 20% increased maximum life and minions created recently cannot be damaged that is a very big one to this build because our, our skeleton mages are always created recently so in the first four seconds because that's what is considered created recently of summoning our mages they will not take any damage they will be on full life I mean that's that's awesome we definitely want to go with blessed rebirth and then we're once again going to go with Renewal. That gives us another 5% chance to deal double damage. And it gives us some more regeneration. Now, for the small clusters, I, I went with Fettle. Two small clusters with Fettle. On the first small cluster, I went with three passive. And, you know, Fettle gives us 10% increased maximum life and 20 to maximum life. Great for the build. That's a ton of life right there. You know, if you notice, our life is at like 6.4k, which is awesome. For the other small cluster, I have just another Fettle, uh, or I'm sorry, I have Surging Vitality. Now, Surging Vitality gives 8% increased maximum life, regenerate 0.5% of life per second. And then every, the one that I like about Surging Vitality is, as you see right there, every four seconds, regenerate 10% of life over one second. You know, that's great. So every four seconds, you're getting a 10% life boost. I mean, like auto regeneration, which is huge defensive for the build. Okay. For your large cluster jewel, try to get an 8 passive, and for your medium cluster jewels, you can go with either 4 or 5 passives. If this guide has been helpful, consider checking out my channel for more content, and also consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow and would be greatly appreciated. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with some gameplay footage. Thank you for watching.